fastest time I've ever done, which is the fastest by any Australian on a 250-metre track, is uh, 9.94. And virtually you're going flat out for 200 metres. And your top speed when you hit the 200-metre line is about 76, 77 k an hour. So the, the million-dollar question is, like, yeah, how do you go faster? Here's the final, first to sixth. World Kieran Championship. In February this year, Shane Perkins became world champion at the Kieran, cycling's explosive sprint event. In this kind of contest, the difference between being a loser and world champion is counted in hundreds of seconds. And it's not just the athlete that fights for those hundreds. Shane's success is the product of his team's plan, drawn from meticulous data and executed with scientific precision. Shane is, is very finely tuned, he's a bit like a Formula 1 car, he just needs that exact perfect body function and biomechanics in order to perform at the optimal level. So we need to be very accurate and, and very specific with him. He's going so fast now, he's got to the point where the motorbike can no longer go any faster safely on the vel- velodrome and he's right on the back of that motorbike, you know, pushing it upwards, you know, towards 80 kilometres per hour. The Olympics in 2012, that's going to be Perco's grand final. And we need to have this machine well oiled. And we've had two years of good data now behind Perco. So we know exactly what he responds to and what works and what doesn't. Bottom line Shane's a machine built for power. At maximum output, he pushes 2,500 watts through his pedals. That's more than four times the power the average male can generate. It's enough to run 12 flat screen TVs. If he spent the day in bed, his body would go through more calories than yours does in a normal day up and about. At peak heart rate, Shane pumps blood with more pressure than petrol through a Bowser. We virtually train our body to absolutely get the maximum out of it when we call on it. Instead of winding up, it needs to just go bang. It takes an enormous amount of of effort and discomfort to reach that kind of speed because of, you know, the amount of lactic acid that you've produced. Shane is operating right at that jagged edge uh, where he's having to tolerate the kinds of, of symptoms that would turn most people off the sport. For Perkins, training isn't practice. It's only through constant maximum efforts that he can make improvements. You feel like you need to go to the toilet, you feel like you need to throw up, your legs are burning, you can't walk, sometimes you black out. Yeah, it's fairly intense. He worked to the point where he's rolled up in a little ball on the ground in between, in between sets, resting. So he pushes himself absolutely to maximum. Cosmetic appearance has no bearing on Shane's training. His team builds only the muscles that will enhance his performance. As far as I'm concerned, he can never be strong enough. And, and the more strength he, he, he has, the, the bigger the gears he's going to be able to push. During intense training, Shane is burning upwards of 5,000 calories a day. That's equal to 17 bowls of pasta. To perform at his level, the body needs more nutrients than is humanly possible to consume. He has a daily tailored supplement regime that includes a series of amino acids to improve muscle growth and stimulate immediate recovery, as well as proteins and vitamins. This is the edge we're trying to give our athletes, and it's it's new stuff. It might not be validated by a proper nutritional study at a university yet, but emerging science out of, say, the medical world, and we go, OK, if it's not going to harm the athlete and there is a chance that this is going to be beneficial for them, we'll give it a go. Every year you're trying to you know, go with that 1% or a couple of percent, and that's by nutrition, supplements, massage, really looking after yourself, getting off your legs. If he's not putting... 2,500 watts, but only 2,300, and there's something wrong. Uh, and, and at that level, it's, it's minute, but we have to be able to pick it up and, and make sure that we know what it is so we can actually raise the bar again and bring it back up to these 2,500 watts. Once you're on the track, it's like, it's all about you. I'm not someone that needs to sit there for half an hour and really get myself in the zone. I think I love that... Uh, that rush that you get when you kind of walk out on the track and it's just a great feeling when you line up against one other person and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to kick your ass, mate.